As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. Ideally, if you're going to have a gratifying life, you're going to have some good connections that you can draw upon. Ultimately, the quality of life that you have is going to be determined in large part by being able to connect in a very meaningful way with uh, individuals who wind up having a, a, that meaningful position in your life. As a therapist, one of the problems that I would uh, talk with individuals about on a very uh, large scale would be uh, when people would come into my office and they would say, well, I thought I had the potential for connection with somebody, or I thought I actually did have a connection with that person, only to find out that it didn't materialize or it didn't unfold in the way that, that I thought. And many times they'll talk about how they realize over time that they had actually uh, uh, grabbed hold of what we might refer to as fool's gold. I mean, for example, they may say, oh yeah, we had plenty of times where we were able to talk about interesting topics and share experiences that we had in common with each other. We would have nice conversations or it may be that uh, you'll go even a little bit deeper and say, oh, and, and there were times when we could talk about personal highs and lows and you know the, the pluses and minuses that we've had in our life. And I felt like we had something uh, of a, a more personal dimension that was building there. Or I just feel like we had a lot in common. We had a lot of experiences that we wanted to enjoy together. But then over time, it's like, but it never did grow or deepen, or that person eventually decided or uh, illustrated they weren't really interested in cultivating it to a, a fuller extent. What's going on? When you feel like you can have that connection uh, with a narcissist, inevitably, you're going to uh, find over the passing of time, it's not going to happen. Why can't narcissists connect in any kind of sustained fashion? Well, I have six, six key points that I want to talk with you about that will explain this to you. And as you're able to see this, I'm hoping you can see that there's something that you're encountering that's just uh, uh, built into the equation where it's just not going to happen. They want to make it think if the relationship falls apart, it's all about you, but know there's something bigger going on. Now, the first explanation I'm going to give you is um, that probably uh, uh, we're going to start with the big one and, and kind of work our way from there. The uh, the thing that for you to realize is, number one, narcissists can attach, but they cannot immerse, okay? And I want you to see that in the distinction. Uh, one of the things uh, when I talk about the healthiest form of relationship is that you're able to have uh, shared values and standards and principles. You're able to empathize with one another. And then when it comes time to really show the, the tone and texture of the relationship, you're able to go into an immersive mode. And by that, I mean, you can lay down your ego, you can lay down all of your uh, uh, needs of the moment and realize this is a very real person in front of me who has real needs and real th uh, thoughts, feelings, and concerns. And I'm going to go as far into that as I possibly can to know that individual. And you just lay down whatever your craving of the moment is. And it's like, I'm committing myself to knowing this person through and through. Now, when that other person can do it in reverse, you've got something really good going on. When, when we talk about this, though, narcissists don't go into immersion. They'll, they'll attach in the sense that, well, we can enjoy good activities together, or we can tell stories to one another, or we can express opinions, and we can act friendly, and we can even have uh, you know some, some physical things that we do with each other that uh, are fun, you know, whether it's uh, events or whatever it might be. But immersion, no. Laying down the ego, no. And, uh, and uh, experiencing with and going all the way in a tuned in kind of way, the narcissist is like, I'm not programmed to do that. Uh, that that's, that's too much, keeping in mind that part of narcissism is an inability to empathize. Now, there's a second reason that narcissists don't connect well, 
and that is they have too strong of a need to be in control. Now, uh, over time, they can seem to show that they're, they accept you and, uh, and they uh, want to connect well with you, but it comes with a caveat, and that is in their need for control, it's like, now, uh, you need to give me your loyalty, you need to give me your deference, and uh, basically it translates into the idea, as long as you stay compliant with my, with my requirements, you and I are going to be connected. When in fact that's not connected, that's just a, a conditional form of attaching, which I just mentioned is a very different kind of thing. A third reason that narcissists don't connect well is that they quickly run into what I would refer to as relationship fatigue. Uh, in, in other words, uh, there are times when relationships uh, require work. You know, uh, the narcissist thinks, hey, look, as long as you and I are in sync, then uh, hey, I'm on board, I'm good. But there are times when you're not in sync. Your needs uh, are different or just maybe the timing of how you want to uh, approach certain things is not the same. And, the, uh, and, and sometimes conflict shows up and the narcissist is thinking, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You want me to go into all of that space with you like uh, we have to grind it out or we have to work things through and we have to uh, self-sacrifice? Mm, no, that sounds too hard for me. And so when relationships get to the point where you have to go into that harder work of making it uh, happen and keeping it sustained, uh, the narcissist reveals, well, I I'm only there as long as the good times keep rolling. I don't want to have to deal with all that hard stuff. That's what I refer to as their relationship fatigue, or another term I use is relationship laziness. Um, a fourth reason that they are unable to connect is they won't tell you this right up front, but ultimately you begin realizing to the narcissist, you exist as a supplier for their ego needs. You've heard the term narcissistic supply. Narcissists uh, step into relationships, attachments, uh, hoping that they're gonna be admired or they can be entertained or uh, that uh, you're gonna reinforce their biases. You're gonna like the people they like and hate the people they hate. As long as you uh, keep their ego and their um, ideas propped up, it's like, yeah, you and me, we're tight. Um, but uh, when you don't feed their ego needs and you don't uh, give them the supply that they're wanting to prop up, uh, prop up who they are, it's like, uh, I, you, you've, you've lost your utility, utility to me, I'm moving on. Then a fifth reason that they have difficulty connecting is that judgmentalism is pervasive. Their need to judge other individuals is just baked into who they are. Uh, keep in mind that part of narcissism means that they have this attitude of false superiority, which means that they're constantly thinking who's in, who's out, who, uh, who uh, makes the grade, who does not make the grade. They themselves were exposed to a lot of the, uh, the judgmentalism in their earlier years, and now they've become the judge. And, and as a result, they're not able to see themselves as equal to you because you could judge them back if you wanted to. Uh, it's like, no, I, I'm just going to go ahead and pronounce myself as the judge. And as long as you, uh, you make the grade, then we're okay. When in fact, healthy connections goes well beyond that judgmentalism. And then a sixth reason, we're just going to uh, say this as a, as a summary, and that is basically uh, the, the whole pattern of narcissism is uh, a, a relationship handicap to that individual. You, you simply can't go in and have healthy connections with people when you're driven by raw selfishness or an attitude of entitlement or low uh, empathy towards others, uh, con uh, comp uh, uh, condescension, the need to be propped up and all of that. Their, their entire constitution is simply not conducive to true connections. Over time, narcissists will prove, and when I say that, they will prove that they simply can't connect. Um, there's too much turmoil on the inside. There's too much egotism on the inside. And so it's simply not going to happen. Um, you see, taking this one step further, the, the only way you're going to be able to have a genuine connection is uh, for you first to be someone who knows and understands and lives into love. And you've heard me say probably before that I consider narcissism to be the absence of love. 
Uh, when you know love and when you lean into love, then you've uh, reached a form of maturity that can sustain relationships. You can still disagree with other individuals. Sometimes you argue. Uh, sometimes you have lapses in your communication. Sometimes you misunderstand. And, and when you get to that point, the narcissist thinks, nah, those are deal breakers for me. But the loving person says, okay, when that happens, then it allows me the opportunity to know you more fully and for you to know me more fully. Let's immerse, going back to that word. And let's go into that and let's figure out how can we be there with one another even in the midst of our differences. And, and uh, a theme that I repeatedly have is I'm not shocked when somebody differs from me. Of course not. Variety is built into all of, of creation and, and uh, it, it includes human beings. It includes all the other physical things out there. And so it, it doesn't surprise me when we, uh, we're not the same. Love is able to transcend all of that. And that's part of your necessary psychological infrastructure if you're wanting to connect. And the narcissist thinks, mm, no, uh, we, we're, we're not on the same page with that. So... Here on Team Healthy, I'm hoping you can realize, you know, it's it's one thing to say they're going to attach to you, but it's another thing to say that they can connect with you and have that full immersive and safe experience uh, with you. Narcissists are not able to do that based on the way that they're constituted. Uh, keep that in mind as you engage with these individuals and then adjust your expectations accordingly. And if you're trying to fit that uh, proverbial square peg into a round hole and you realize it's not working out very well, well, perhaps now you can understand more fully why that happens. And in the meantime, I'm hoping you can commit yourself to uh, expending your energies in ways that actually are going to be more gratifying as opposed to trying to reform somebody who's not going to be reformed. Uh, yeah, bottom line is, uh, I'm hoping you can, uh, can, can remain committed to love because in doing so, that allows you to be committed to your inner uh, sense of com uh, contentment. So I hope that videos such as this can give you some good insight about what you're dealing with. If you haven't already uh, subscribed, I would encourage you to do so. We're going to keep more videos coming towards you. I like to pick up on as many nuances as I can regarding this topic, and that's what I do here on this channel. Uh, so know that I, I appreciate you allowing me to be a part of your journey. Sometimes when you're trying to deal with things like this, uh, like I say, well, I, I encountered this in my therapy office back when I had my uh, practice. Uh, it, may, it may be that you'll decide, you know, I, I could use the help of a good therapist that can help me sift this out. Uh, and you know that I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. It's a whole team of licensed professional therapists, and you can go through their selection process and, uh, and find a therapist that can work with you on this. It can be so beneficial and uh, to the point of life-changing, like life, life Life altering to have somebody that says, I get you, I understand you, and I want to walk you through the process of you being your best version of yourself, please get the help that you might need that you would need. Also, I've put together courses, and these are very extensive. I put a lot of work into them. Each course has at least 25 videos, and each video has handouts and, uh, and questions. Uh, it's, it's, it's my own uh, way of trying to get into a, a therapeutic mindset with you. We have uh, the course Ready, Set, Connect about making good connections. This is me about establishing your boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite those controllers. On my website, we also have uh, access to my webinars, which are 90-minute presentations of a, a bit of a different nature, as well as access to my podcast and uh, many, many articles and my books, etc. I know you want to connect. Narcissists are not wired to be connected. They detach, but they don't connect. They don't immerse. Uh, knowing that, I'm hoping you can reserve your energies toward individuals who can have uh, that reciprocation with you. And in the end, I'm hoping you can be the kind of person that says, even though my connections may be fewer than what I would want, uh, I want them to be real. I want them to be meaningful. And ultimately, you can find that's the way you get into your place where you find true peace.